All right, everybody, I just came off an hour-long live stream of GPT-5, the latest and greatest in the world of AI models, now going to be likely the most hyped of the AI models, and as somebody who's been a CMO for over a decade, is deep into marketing and sales and how to grow a business, I wanted to break down for you what I thought the highlights and the lowlights of GPT-5 are so that you all didn't have to watch an hour long live stream, plus you can contextualize them to your business. So first, I always think what somebody markets is a good thing to check out. Uh, you know, I'm a marketer, I like it. So I wanna pull up the product page for GPT-5, and I'm gonna talk, to, talk a little bit about what they're highlighting and kind of what I took from the live stream. All right, so what, the biggest things about G, GPT-5 to me is that GPT-5 is here for everyone. One of the big things they made a big deal of is it's available to all chat GPT users, including free. That big, big thing. Second big, big thing is voice way, way better, available to everyone, including free users. They said hours of voice, voice interaction for free users, near unlimited voice interaction for paid users. So in terms of the democratization of AI, AI getting better, and more accessible to everyone, GPT-5 is a big step forward in that. And as a marketer, what that makes me think and believe is that the amount of people using GPT-5 and ChatGPT to replace traditional search queries that they might have done on Google or Bing or other channels is going to go up. You're gonna have more users because this model is smarter and better and it's available for free. And they're gonna be using it for more search type use cases. And so as a marketer, I have to keep doubling down and keep focusing on how I show up on these answer, answer engines. We did a great show with Asia Frost that's on the channel. If you want to go check that out, I think producer Darren can help us link that up in the description down below too. Okay, so those are that's kind of the democratization is that GPT-5 is here for everybody. It's here for everybody this week other than nonprofit and enterprise accounts are getting it this week. I have refreshed my chat GPT what seems like 200,000 times, I still do not have access. Uh, They're rolling out access today. I assume at some point in the next 24 hours, I, I will have access. Kira and I, as soon as we do have access, we're going to do some benchmarking and some some work with it, and we'll do, an, we'll do another show. But what I can do is give everybody the real quick overview. And so if you look at GPT-5 and you look at the product page, the live stream literally is just finishing. Um, there's a couple of couple of things that are that are interesting. Gone are the days of the big model picking list where you have to pick GPT 4.5 or 4.0 or 0.3 or 0.3 Pro. There, basically, you're going to use GPT-5, and GPT-5 is going to do a lot of that in the back end. If you're a paid user, you are going to have like a thinking mode of GPT-5. And for developers or people using the API, there's going to be like a mini and nano mode for like low cost, high speed kind of questions and uses. But the core GPT-5 is going to kind of go through those modes independently and reduce a lot of the cognitive load for somebody using this, which again, makes me think that people are going to do more evaluation more buying with chat GPT than on your website. And this is a big, important shift for marketers. It's fast. They reiterated this over and over that it's much, much faster. Uh, I'm excited to see how much faster it is. The other thing they spent a lot of time, like half the live stream was about coding and how good it is at coding, how it's beating the coding benchmark. And that's good. I still think we are a long ways away from having, from everything they showed. What essentially the big step up, up, up is, is that GPT-5 is going to be much better at what, what's called front end coding. So the, the part of the website you see versus like the technical back end that makes everything work. And the aesthetics are much higher. And so if I'm a marketer, if I'm somebody running a business, what I suspect I'm gonna do is build V1s of websites, landing pages, web assets, mini applications in GPT-5 and let GPT-5 do a lot more of the design and branding work on those assets than previous AI models. And that's really going to be the standout. So coding seems to be honestly the biggest step forward in this model.
the to me the most interesting part of the live stream was around writing but writing was like literally two minutes of the live stream and the rest of the live stream was largely like coding some health some api stuff it's interesting but uh, if you didn't watch the live stream, you didn't did miss anything. While I think this is a meaningful step forward, I do think GPT-5 is not going to be as game changing as somebody as many people were hoping. I think the hype was very high. I think it is like a good, meaningful step up. I don't think the hype is like all the way up here. But they did show a GPT-40 versus GPT-5 writing comparison. And it was, the GPT-5 was way more empathetic, way more contextual, way more high taste, sounded like a human actually wrote it. And I think that is interesting. And so I suspect if you're using chat GPT for writing right now for business purposes, you're going to keep using it. It's going to get better. And especially like some of the use cases that we're using it for uh, at HubSpot is to write highly personalized emails, highly personalized website content. That is going to get much better. And I suspect you're going to see conversion rates and marketing metrics continue to get better as these models gets better. That's That's been our thesis all along. Uh, they're also, again, they talked about health and trust and safety, and that's all good good stuff. That's kind of not the point of this channel, so I'm not going to go into that in a deep way. A couple other things that I do want to show you. I thought this, first of all, I thought this tweet, so I thought this tweet from Dan Zeal was, was really quick summary of what happened. It's like, it can code well and code quickly. It can build lightweight games and apps. So similar to what you can do in Claude Artifacts, except it seems like a little bit better and a little bit better at the front end side of things. The writing does seem much better than 4.0. I think it's a little better than GPT 4.5. I, what I don't know until I play around with it is how big the writing leap is going to be. They did a lot of small features like the voice. You're going to be able to personalize, personalize personalities. So if you want it to be sarcastic or brief or whatever, that is going like the user experience of chat GPT seems like it's going to change a lot in GPT 5 where it's going to become more personal, more of what you want it to be. It's still got that that integration with Gmail and Calendar, and so they're going for those personal uh, assistant use cases, which, which is cool. I think the biggest thing to me here, I'm going to uh, share this tweet from, from Vibe, Vibe Code app. Okay, so if you look here, um, there, there's a, an account Vibe Code app that got early access, and right now it's showing kind of the front end design sensibilities. It's showing Opus 4.1 from Anthropic versus GPT-5, and one of the things you do see, the, the probably the biggest takeaway for me is that the front end design and UX and user experience reasoning and decision making is much better in GPT-5 than any model I've seen, which again, has me thinking marketers are gonna be spending a lot of time prototyping and building V1s in Canvas in GPT-5 after it comes out. The other interesting thing is our friends over at Lovable have released that they have access to GPT-5. And I think there's a, a take where like, GP5 and Canvas is replacing a lot of the use cases in Lovable. What Lovable is going to have to do is be much more integrated into databases and getting getting this code and publishing it, making it easily accessible on the internet. So you're seeing the whole internet, that the AI internet, is about to get upgraded as G GPT-5 comes out. Hey everyone, we'll be right back to the show. But in honor of GPT-5 dropping, we've got the GPT-5 marketing stack. These are 10 advanced marketing props that you should be going and using in GPT-5 as soon as you get access to it. Use it to test GPT-5, but more importantly, to get better marketing results. GPT-5 is gonna be the smartest GPT we've ever seen, and these prompts are gonna help you do a lot. Competitive intelligence work to see what's happening with your customers. Help you process massive data sets to get real marketing insights all at once and to give you really great marketing strategy recommendations for your business. You can get it right now. Click the link in the description below, scan that QR code. Now back to the show. So those are a few of like the quick things that we're seeing with GPT-5. Those are a few things that they covered on the live stream. Here's my take. 
because I don't I don't want this video to go on forever and ever. Because uh, you're trying to get the the skinny on cheap D5. It's good. I think it is going to be a meaningful step up from O3 and O3 Pro. I think especially the fact that it's in free is a big deal. I think the fact that it's going to be incrementally better at coding and writing, especially front-end coding, is a big deal for marketers. And I suspect the average marketer is going to end up using chat GPT more. Was it as good as I thought it was going to be? No, it was not. I am not here mind-blown basically being like, oh my gosh, the internet's a completely different place today than it was. No, I think we are on a steady trajectory of AI getting better. And I think a lot of the AI apps you're already using, like HubSpot and, and the like, as GPT-5 gets integrated, they'll get better. And that's awesome. And that's like a great thing for all of us who are working and doing marketing, doing sales. The truth is, it's not, I'm not here talking to you like, oh my gosh, everything is about to change. No, everything is continuing to change along the trajectory that it's on. And I think that's the important thing. So my advice is, regardless of what chat GPT account you have, get in there, use chat, use GPT-5, see what use cases for your business it's actually good for. I'm going to do that, that same thing. Kieran and I are going to do that together. We'll be back with our top use cases, our actual review. But this is a quick reaction to what they actually announced and promoted. My, there, there's two last little things I want to make sure I hit. One, they had a little subtle Apple jab in the video that I loved, which was a team of PhDs in your pocket. It's a playoff, a thousand songs in your uh, pocket, the original iPad tagline. I like that. I love, I love kind of, you know, Johnny Ive works at OpenAI now. I imagine there's like a little jab. I thought that was both good marketing and a little good inside uh, jab and joke. Second thing that I thought was kind of swept under, they didn't talk a lot about, is that GPT-5 is going to be able to consume video and see what you're doing on the screen, is, that, is, is what they said. If it can actually do that and do that well, that will be very, very important to how we use these models and open up new use cases, especially from a marketing perspective. So I think that's one of the things I'm going to be looking at as GPT-5 rolls out. And if it's good, we'll probably end up doing a full show on that. So those are the two things that I don't think people are talking about hardly at all that I thought were interesting and kind of cool. So that is GPT-5. It's rolling out to everybody over the next day or so. So keep checking your chat GPT and we'll be back with our full hands-on review very soon. Thanks everyone. See you on the next episode. This data is wrong every freaking time. Have you heard of HubSpot? HubSpot is a CRM platform where everything is fully integrated. Whoa, I can see the client's whole history, calls, support tickets, emails, and here's a task from three days ago I totally missed. HubSpot, grow better.